What is up YouTube? Guess what today is? It's bearing day. It's bearing day in the rear end. I want to get the rear end put on this bike. Uh, what does that mean? Well, well, it means we put it on, but first we got to put bearings and everything. Super exciting, right? There's probably a few of you sick f***s out there that won't like watching this kind of stuff. So I'm going to provide that for all seven of you that watch this video. What are we putting bearings in exactly? We're going to do swing arm. We're going to do the linkage. And then we're going to do the shock. Then we're going to put all that together, put it on the bike, and we'll make this thing start looking a little bit more like a bike that could have wheels someday. I'm very excited about this prospect. So let's just go ahead and get started. For our swing arm bearings, we're using a Pivotworks swing arm bearing kit. Now it only includes the bearings and such for specifically the actual arm. The linkage bearings, we're going to be using an all balls kit. Uh, now the all balls kit comes with everything that you need for your linkage as well as for your rear shock. Those are the two kits we're using today to replace our bearings. The only bearing specific tool that we're going to be using to do all of these bearings is a Tusk bearing installer tool. This thing is cheap and if you replace your bearings at all, this thing pays for itself very quickly. This thing's stupid easy to use and cheap. So definitely check these out. Uh, not a big fan of uh, generally cheap tools. That's not true. All my shit's cheap. I'll shut the fuck up now. First thing you want to do is decide what you're going to work on first. So we'll just get everything else out of the way that we're not going to be installing first. Start putting our bearings in the linkage first. So we'll put everything else to the side. What I like to do is get our my all of my bearings and seals and stuff laid out in the order in which uh, they go inside of these little holes right here. Real quick, I'm going to knock this out. I'm not going to explain how to use this tool. Okay, I'll explain a little bit. So this comes with uh, three different size bearing drives, we'll call them, drivers. Now you just got to find the one that marries up best to the bearing that goes in there that doesn't have a lot of slack. That one's just about perfect. Now, so this is what we're going to use to push the bearing inside of its seat. And I'm going to do this real fast because I ain't playing around today. I got to get stuff done. This is going to go on either side. This is going to go on the opposite side of the driver. Just piece this thing together like a boss. The only thing I don't like about this is how much goddamn slack you got to take up at all times. It's fucking annoying. I'm going to get our bearing in there just like a so. We're going to do this. We're going to get this just kind of almost started. We're going to put our this little Jimmy guy on there. We're going to screw this nut on until the end of goddamn time. Super excited there. Now, here's the trick. Can I hold this thing and have it not rip out of my hand like an asshole and kill me? That's going to be the, that's going to be the big question here. Look at how easy that is. Now, how far do we want to drive this thing in? Well, to the center, just center it. We got to kind of eyeball it here. You know, yeah, you could use a depth measurement gauge and all that shit, but it's not really that important. Eyeball it, get it centered and move on with your life. Okay. There's no reason to get crazy. And definitely stick your thumb right in here so that when this turns, it can break it off. Just saying. That's fucking pro tip right there. <laughs> this thing pretty much centered. Man, that looks good. I'm eyeballing it. Look at that. First try. So like I said, you want to try to get the bearing centered. And it's okay to eyeball it. Okay? That's pretty good. The seal's going to for sure go in there. So we take the seal, letters out, just push it in with your finger. If you can't push it in with your finger, uh, you could use uh, you could just tap it in with like a socket or any number of things. You just want to be careful not to damage the seal because the seal is what keeps the dirt outside of your bearings. It makes your bearings last a long time and uh, bearings will be very happy, very, very happy. So uh, after doing this a few times already, I've uh, revised my suggestions. Okay. Put the bearing, this bearing, on top of here. That way your nut's not scratching your bearing driver. I don't know if this, I don't know if there is a way to do this right, but I like this now. This is now my new favorite way. But it all works, seems to work no matter what. I'm just gonna drive this in. Get it right in the center. See how much easier this is? Now you can use a, you can use the bench vise and do it with sockets and stuff. This is so much quicker, guys. So I'm gonna go into about, just past this little white dot right there, if you can see it. And bam. 
We'll take a look, see how things look. Should be pretty close to center. And pack a little grease in there. This will obviously grease them, but it also helps hold these stupid roller bearings in. Put a lot in there. This might be the last time you ever grease these, you lazy bastard. And then I like to put some grease in here where the seal's gonna go, because it makes the seal go in so much easier. Put a little grease right there. And then we'll wipe this grease off once we get our seals in. It's a tremendous amount of grease. It may not be necessary to put that much, I'm just saying. Push them with your fingers. You can do it. You're strong. There we go. I did it. I did it. Letters out, guys. Remember. Seals in. Easy day. Let me wipe my greasy hands off. Why don't, yeah, I mean, maybe, why don't I wear gloves? Why? Uh, I do sometimes. I do sometimes. Grease isn't going to hurt you. It's good for you. It literally is probably cancer causing. I, I don't know. So lastly for these, uh, technically if you look at the, I think the drawing in the book, it has, oh, I don't wanna push my bearings out. Okay, we're good. I think in the book it shows this long side in first. It really doesn't matter, but there we go. There we go. Boom, get these things in. That way your stupid needle bearings stay where they're supposed to go. So what's next on the old docket here? So we got a uh, next piece of linkage to get some bearings will be this. One bearing, two bearings. With these, each one of these is gonna be pressed in and sit something like this. So how far do we wanna press these in? Well, that's a great question. About as deep as the seal is. Yeah, you can use a micrometer. You can, you, you know, you can measure your depth. You can get crazy. Or you could just drive it in this far. Move on with your life. Just eyeball it. It's okay. It's going to be okay. Boop, boop. Oh, I need a little more slack there, bud. And look at that. Perfect. So I uh, went ahead and got the other bearing in as well as just push the seals in with my fingers. The last thing to go in is this inner race. A couple important things I'd say is there's really no reason to try to use a tool on these seals. Grease up the seal, grease up the inner lip here, and it should slide in. You just keep using your thumbs, press it in. And if you need to use a tool, you can, but chances are you start wrapping on this thing, those, those needle berries are gonna fall out of there. So uh, if you could press it in with your fingers, suck it up and do it that way. There you go, that's it, that's the linkage. And honestly, it took maybe 20 minutes total. I'm gonna cut a lot of it out, obviously. I've never, ever, ever done this. I've never, never changed these bearings out. They came with the kit, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it. I've never done it, so this will be my first time. Never change the bearings in a shock. Should be the same type of procedure, though. It can't be too hard. Getting the bearings out is going to be a nightmare, though. I'm going to place the parts the way they came out so I have a visual reference of how they go back in when I'm done. I mean, that's just child's play. Bullshit out of there. So there's one of those on each side. There's an inner race. And, oh, yeah, this is just like any other. Pop the seals off. Man, this can't get any easier. Just... <laughs> That's why you got to be careful because these stupid things have come out on you when you're banging around too much. So let's get, uh, and since this is the bearing we're pulling out, it doesn't really matter. But for the one going in, you definitely want to be careful. Now that now they won't come out on command. Hilarious how that works. I'm going to drive this bearing out the same way we put them in. Just, ooh, I don't know if I have one small enough. I got figured out. Now, none of my bearing drivers will work here. They're all too big, as far as I can tell. Yeah, they're all seemingly a bit too big, and there's no way that I could push it, continue to push it all the way out. So, what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do is, so I'm gonna use the new bearing to push the old bearing out, okay? Now, this is a good, this, this is a situation where maybe you'd wanna use a bench vise, but you wanna know what? I have one, it's right there. I wanna try this. Because I'm feeling a little crazy right now. Feeling a little crazy. I feel confident that this will work. Now, if this fails miserably, you can laugh at me. I'll accept that. What do I do? I still need a big 
giant socket though for this to fall into. We tried this. It's a pretty big socket. If I don't use this, it would just butt up against this and everything would come, go, come, come to a grinding halt. So we're going to try this. We're going to get our... That one seems like a good size because it fits right on that razor. This is no man's land. I've never done this. It's probably a terrible choice. Woot. Let's see what kind of terrible damage I've done here. No, none. Looking good. Ah, the other one's almost out. Okay, cool. So if we're going to do it this way, I recommend putting grease in there to hold these bearings in a little bit better. To hold these needle bearings in real good. It's a learning experience. I'm going to push that in just a bit further. Knock the other one the rest of the way out. And worst case, I got to go back in and push it back the other way again to center it. Super dumb. Don't advise this at home. But you know what, man? Part of motorcycle repair is just getting creative. And the other bearing's out. That's good news. Cool. Now I got to push the bearing back to center. Isn't this fun? Tell me this isn't the funnest day ever. Eighth of an inch. And then put our new seals in. Let's get rid of some of this old junk. Get that out of the way. We want to confuse our new seals with the old seals. All right, guys, getting close. Just got to throw our seals in, and we're going to be done with the shock. Remember, letters out. There we go. Our inner bearing race in there. And we'll put the other metal guy in. Bam. Bam. Light show. Brand spanking new, buddy. Got them new bearings. We can start putting the whole swing arm together, put the linkage on, and get this thing thrown on the bike. Look at how great these parts look. It's crazy. I've already done this side, but let's go ahead and do this side. I think the best thing you can do is lay out your bearings in the direction they're going to go. And from here back is the inside of the swing arm, and from here forward is the outside of the swing arm. So what I like to do is I like to press this back bearing in first, and this tool from Tusk actually makes it super duper easy. Boom. Now I'm going to turn this tusk up. The reason why I do that is because this uh, bearing needs to go in that deep. Okay. So what I do is I figure out how far on this tusk sign this seal is. It's not rocket science. Get it close. It goes, I'm going to drive it in to the point of this K has disappeared past here. We're going to take 19 millimeter socket and just start pulling the bearing into the swing arm. Next step that goes in is the seal and it's going to hollow parts going to go on the inside. Pretty easy. Now this is a YZ. I don't know how they are on other bikes but I keep these things in order. Up. So for the outside of the swing arm the remainder here. You want to get where we're going to press our bearing in first. This outside bearing is going to just ride flush with this lip around here. So we're going to push it in that far. And we can eyeball that. That's super easy. Tusk tools are pretty cool and they're really inexpensive and they really do make life a lot easier. Steel bearing inside here. Get it nice and greased up. Pivot Works is kind enough to give you grease, which is always nice. And then another bearing. A little grease on here, and if by a little I mean a whole bunch. Bing. Got our last washer. So we got our last seal here. We're gonna go letters out. This little hollow part's gonna go on the inside. You could probably push it on with your fingers if you have super strong fingers, which I apparently do not. And then I'm gonna slide this inside. Let's grease it up a little bit though. Let's put a little grease on there. A little free grease from the inside of this thing. And my hands are going to be super moisturized after all this. So that's going to slide in just like so. And we got this little guy. There we go. Perfect. Done. Swing arm. Done. Easy. That didn't even take that long, did it?
Nope. All right, so we got bearings in all of our linkage. Ba ba ba. We got a bearing put in our lower shock mount here, which was uh, slightly more painful than I would have liked to have been, but at least I figured out a way to do it with just a linkage tool. You know, that's too big for the bearing. Push the old bearing out with a new bearing. As long as you're careful, should be okay. Disclaimer, not a doctor. So you figure it out on your own. Next thing we're gonna do is get this linkage and stuff put on the swing arm, and then we'll get the swing arm put on the bike along with the rear shock, and we'll take a look at it. So let's do this. Oh, I hate you, powder coat. Why do you make my life miserable? More grinding on the thing. Yes, thank you very much. Breaks my heart to do that, but it was necessary. All this grease is gonna get squeegeed off and make a mess. So you guys might ask yourself, why would you put this old seal guard back on? Well, 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 I'll tell you what. It's got a lot of life left. It's barely used. That's number one. Two, do you know how much this thing costs? It retails for like 58 bucks. I think it's 40 bucks on Rocky Mountain ATV MC. No, man, this is not a show bike. It is a bike I'm going to ride. I know what it's gonna look like by the end of next season. It's not gonna look as good as it does now. So the seal guard, I am not gonna buy a new one just for the sake of buying a new one, just so you know. I just wanted to put that out there. God bless. God bless you, everyone. Not gonna lie, that's enough bearings for today, I think, right? I think everybody can agree on this. Rear end of the bike is on, that's good news. Sands rear tire. But next video, we're gonna do something about that. We're going from a 19 inch tire to an 18 inch tire. Why an 18 inch? Because 18 inch is better, better tire selection. It's a little cushier on the trail as well. Can you run a 19? Yeah, absolutely. Get crazy. That's the next video. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to follow along with this build. And I appreciate you guys hanging out with me on Bearing Day. Super fun day. Best day of the year. Yay. See you guys later.